Now I put on a somber music for this somber subject, Baffled by Baffles, and we'll talk about uh, the issue of uh, acoustic uh, parameters. So the primary, one of the primary purposes of our drivers and speakers is to match uh, the acoustic impedance of the air, so to transmit the energy into the air into the room and engineers mostly think about this as an issue that is purely electromechanical so so like uh, a certain number of watts translated to certain db and it's all in the cores and the amplifier output and, and we treat it as an electrician's problem however it is primarily an acoustic issue electric properties are secondary in this aspect and because of this neglect that's why we have the majority of uh, our audiophile speakers sound the way they do today so let's go first of all when you have a driver it produces uh, two uh, acoustic events one of them is the pressure in front of your speaker so so the waves propagating on the front uh, my artistic talent is, <laughs> is being showcased here and there is also a, a back pressure that is created behind your, your speaker and so when your cone moves forward then it sucks air like this that, that sucks the air that's behind the driver and pulls it forward so the the role of your speaker cabinet is to separate these two actions because if there is no separation then these waves if they are long enough frequency they will reach around and get cancelled by the waves from the other side and you will have no base response below the half wave frequency of your baffle so anything lower than this will gradually disappear. So now, in this uh, four series uh, horn uh, talks, we all exclusively looked at the front, what happens at the front of your baffle. And today we'll do that as well. For the back, uh, I will have separate uh, lessons. So, so as, as I just mentioned, that that sound wave which corresponds to the half wave that's the dimension the length of your driver basket that's the one that can be reproduced uh, by your driver and if you do not add uh, a baffle behind it then it it will have a severe drop in the frequency response below that point and not just frequency drop but also phase issues as well and here I have this this tiny wave here and that represents uh, the uh, the dust cap which is in the center of your driver and that also creates uh, problems so around the frequency that corresponds to the diameter of your uh, uh, dust cap or face plug you will have uh, uh, SPL issues and also phase uh, issues and um, so when we put a baffle around that then you see now I put this nice big blue here uh, just go like, like this one that big half wave so then the wider your baffle that will define your new lowest frequency extension that your driver can produce without the response falling off or being skewed uh, badly in, in the phase response so so when you look at a typical example let's see in this case we look at an 8 inch driver cone then uh, because it has a cone that is a horn that horn loads it between the diameter of the dust cap and, and the outer diameter of the cone so that is in, in this case usually it's between 1 to 11 kilohertz so you will have a horn loading at, from 1 to 11 kilohertz 
which is usually between 3 to 6 dB. It depends on your actual driver. And also because of the surround, you have this plastic piece here and then your driver basket, so the metallic part here. Because of that, it produces a negative horn loading because it, it folds back in compared to the pressure wave coming out. So that creates a negative horn loading in the frequencies between 700 hertz to a kilohertz and it causes an up to 3 dB loss in the SPL for these frequencies. So, so we have a double horn effect uh, for an 8 inch driver for these frequencies. If you have smaller or bigger driver then you have to scale it up or down proportionately. So, so let's just jump this slide. So what people do today, uh, how they want to uh, fix problems. So now, nowadays if you go to any store, you cannot because uh, they're sh kind of shut down or limited. But before when you could or just browse online, you find like really super narrow speakers, narrow buffer. Buffer is the front of, of your speaker. And uh, you remember like in the old days we used to have speakers that had like really narrow buffers. Maybe you had like, they look like this, very talented drawing, wide, and now we have a narrow version of it. So they are so narrow that, the, that your biggest driver barely fits into it. That's trendy. And they do that because when you have a narrow faceplate, then first, when your driver makes the sound and it propagates out into your living room, then it will come back as reflections from your wall and those reflections will then bounce back from the front and propagate out. And the smaller, the narrower the surface is, the less the chance you have for waves to bounce back and smear the image. So yeah, good job. If we have a very narrow front buffer, we can have extremely uh, precise, not smeared imaging, because there's very little reflections coming off to you. But what people forget is we sacrifice a lot for that. And uh, what are we uh, sacrificing? So we are sacrificing uh, uh, the frequency response and face characteristics. So the narrower your, your uh, speaker is, the more you become sweet spot dependent. Because frequencies that are larger than the width of your front baffle, they will start to wrap around the, the sides of the driver. So they will uh, suffer tremendous uh, step loss and phase uh, alterations. So that's why you really, the narrower your speakers are, the more critical it is to set them up properly and your sweet spot it becomes narrower. So you have a wide buffer speaker that has a wide front. Then uh, for the sweet spot, maybe it's like two or three people on a couch. But when you have this really narrow buffer, it's one person and probably you can't even move a few inches off because then you already hear that yeah, something fishy is happening. And that's because uh, uh, in the general case of, of these uh, speakers built around uh, an 8 inch uh, driver or 6 to 8 inch driver, the, uh, the frequency will su supported by the buffer width is between 7 to 900 hertz. So it's de depending on the exact uh, front of your speaker, exact buffer size. So it's at this frequency range where you have a sudden uh, break in the sound where, where you have a sudden drop in efficiency and you have the face problems. And that's really really bad because that's the nasal sound uh, range. If, 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 if there's an issue with that freak then you have this effect kind of like a nasal effect. And, uh, 
and people use all sorts of tricks like adjusting the crossover and so on but you can do an adjustment and you can have a nice flat frequency response curve for the entire range but that will only work if you are sitting in a sweet spot and if you move slightly off then because uh, uh, because the dispersion works only on axis so this is where your perfect flat frequency response lives if you move a little bit off axis then you will have a, a big hole between 7 and 900 hertz and then you will have uh, issues and, and that will do much worse to your imaging than just being worried about extra reflections because you have a, a proper buffer size so basically now uh, our engineers and us we have created for you and us for the audio files uh, we, we have solved the secondary issue by making the primary issue worse and uh, yes indeed the sound becomes more refined in this way much more uh, special when you have an arrow buffer but it doesn't sound natural so so when we are using such gimmicks that we are sacrificing primary criteria to solve secondary criteria that's when we sacrifice the naturalness of the sound we can have a more controlled sound uh, a more um, more audiophile sound uh, that appears higher resolution for the ear but it will also appear much more unnatural and this is one of the causes that these that our audiophile speakers can play fewer and fewer material because they are suited to play only stuff that is designed to to accommodate this type of distorted uh, design so just going back to that I uh, past couple of days I've been listening to a few of the older reference CDs that I had and one of them is the, the absolute sound sampler from 2003 and the other was a, a Kimber sampler let me just bring them up okay let's see it will be they will be somewhere in this pile let me just ruffle through them so here they are one of them is this absolute sound year 2003 I stored them in not in the original case but in a convenient plastic case so it occupies much less space and back then I remember I used to <laughs> listen to this all the time it sounded so good and so audiophile but uh, listening with the Altex speakers it sounds really colored it's, it's like what's this plastic sound yes it's very detailed high resolution but oh my god this is so not real it's just painful to listen to it. and this is the other the Kimber isomic so Ray Kimber did this recording of Kimber cables he's also into sound recording and he's really he got into it really seriously and uh, and this one that's opening this up I kept the original cover for this because it's nice and slick so it's this recording and 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 with, with these Artex which have a really nice natural sound it sounds truly great and it sounds natural so just because something was was done uh, as an audiophile recording doesn't mean it's bad it's the way how it is done and processed so Ray Kimber has a, a much more natural taste than the absolute sound <laughs> uh, reviewers so he recorded his music to sound as, as, as 
normal music sound so so this is actually choir chorus singing and it, it sounds like a chorus singing and for the absolute sound it's very dynamic very spectacular but it's come on nah it's not real it is fake really really fake and gimmicky uh, i'm sorry to say that but that's how it is and that is because it uh, it is built for technologies that, that are really really gimmicky so now returning back to our front baffle to the the way to prevent that that nasal sound and artificial colored sound is to have a wide front baffle so the lowest supported frequency is much wider and that's why wide front speakers have such a relaxed sound and great mid bass and they are not nervous and angry and skinny but because uh, there is no phase issues around the 700 hertz to 1 kilohertz uh, range and and another way how we can improve this issue even more is not just keep the baffle straight but curve it a little bit to create a little bit of an extra horn in front of your driver so that the the effect of the cone which is a horn effect is is not limited here so it doesn't stop around a kilohertz but it goes out if you like uh, just double so like this is an 8 inch diameter driver and your curve out goes out to 16 inches then then with doubling the diameter you drop the frequency response to half of the frequency and if you can make this opening this little front horn large enough to support just below 500 hertz then you hit jackpot and that's because our ears are sensitive to direction down to 500 hertz if frequency is lower than that we cannot pinpoint where the sound is coming from so if you do not introduce any kind of breakage into the continuity of the frequency range down to this point you will have natural sound and that's that's like super duper important and also if you have a nice curve going out then that also ensures that that your phase uh, characteristics will be much better and you will not have as big problems with the with the reflections either because of the curves the reflections do not reflect directly back at you but they will be dispersed in the room so so let's see our next slide uh, before on the previous side you saw that the surround of the speaker was this blip that that's how all the modern drivers uh, have their uh, surrounds that foam plastic surround that bulges out and it's done so so that uh, it can handle very large cone excursions but the problem with that is that, that plastic uh, doesn't do anything good to the sound one go back to my previous presentation where i showed that it causes uh, that it's the main culprit to cause that minus 3 db uh, drop around 700 hertz 8 900 hertz so if you do your driver properly you will use a surround like this so that, that's like that that harmonica surround and and that one does not produce an extra mountain for the sound waves to climb but the sound can propagate uh, without breakage without a negative horn effect and then you can mount it to your buffer and 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 have a nice uh, horn effect and your bonus is that you have lower hysteresis distortion so yeah avoiding that introducing that nasty plastic sound to your driver so that's one reason why most audiophile speakers sound have that plastic taste it's because of that plastic surround so whatever material we introduce to to our designs they will contribute their uh, the appropriate colorations the, the properties will be part of the sound especially if they are part of the mechanical assembly that that affects the sound so so here 
on the left side we see for improper driver mounting that you see for almost every driver is they slap the driver on in front of your speaker cabinet so it's so the the side of the of the surround is sticking out the proper way to mount is to mount it from the back of your front baffle so you do not see this part you do not see the the frame of, of your driver and you have a little bit of a horn even if you do not have anything just the width of your uh, front baffle that's already a much much better solution than having it stick out so uh, my drawing is not actually not Picasso quality so let's see how it works with actual examples so here is a random speaker and as you see the driver is placed in front of the buffer so it's from mounted from the outside and and that because this lip here this is sticking out it causes that negative horn response however look at this speaker this is actually uh, one of the better examples of what we have today and it, it it really shows that these people are aware of the things I'm talking about because it's not just a plain metal basket here but it's designed so that it it slopes it's 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 a it's a gradual so so there's there's a little bit of climb and then it slopes down so they they thought that they knew that this is an acoustic barrier and they wanted to make it as smooth as they can and yes the, this does contribute to uh, making the characteristics better but they could do an even better job if they mounted the driver from behind but in this case they probably didn't do that because they wanted to create a tiny book shelf speaker and if you mount it from behind you are taking away precious internal space from the cabinet so it means that to have the same parameters same output level and sensitivity they would have needed to make the uh, total volume slightly bigger and and obviously their point was to make as small cabinet as possible uh, so so that's why they mount outside but if you if this is not your consideration that you want to make the smallest bookshelf speaker on planet earth but you make a floor standard proper speaker then just do everyone a favor and mount your drivers properly and here look at that they did a fantastic job with their tweeter and they added a, a, a small front horn so they did a nice front horn loading mm -hmm. uh, good job and if you do it properly uh, this this is uh, my voice of Lancelot speaker the 515c Altec driver and you see the way I did it that this is the front baffle so that's that would be normally the speakers front and behind that I added another layer of the same material so this is basically a ring that is mounted to the front baffle and then the driver is mounted to that ring so, so the driver is in here and from the back it's mounted to that second ring so and also the the edges here they are rounded down so it's not not a they it's not like a step like this but it, it's a nice round so so that the waves can uh, propagate uh, naturally around it and then the and the second ring that's also rounded down and then you look at the inside of the cabinet I round it down that down as well so it doesn't create internal turbulences so with this uh, uh, approach then actually uh, this creates a front horn loading uh, it's and then the front horn loading does not stop at the diameter of, of this uh, hole here which is already I think it's about an 18 inch size but it uh, extends to the size the diameter here like you see here so so this last circle I drew this is the size this is the diameter that's the wavelength of of the frequency that is last supported by the front baffle so it the response will start to fall off 
below that frequency and and for for the speaker that frequency is 315 Hertz so it means that that this driver the output that that comes out to you it will stay phase and an SPL coherent down to 300 Hertz and when you have a narrow speaker like like a narrow buffer uh, where the driver barely fits in the front there you have the coherency falling apart around 800 Hertz and at 800 Hertz that's where your hearing is the most acute to directionality so so that's why you have to be glued to your chair you cannot go to the slide because then uh, then, then it will change and fall apart and and here now we have this response down to 300 Hertz and that is almost an octave below 500 Hertz where we lose accurate imaging so the result of that is that I can sit wherever I want and the imaging is, is, is not changing uh, the tonality doesn't change uh, I am not glued into the chair and, and it's not just that I, I can move around in, in the sofa left and right wherever I want but also I can stand up I can sit on the floor I can be in front of the speaker I can I can sit between the two speakers I can go out the kitchen doesn't matter where I am the the image stays and it just sounds like music and when you have these narrow buffer speakers if you leave your glued spot then you are toast uh, okay and 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 if you think that uh, because of this wide buffer you are losing resolution and detail level think twice because there are these Altec A5 cabinets and and these are uh, more than 70 centimeters wide so that's all they over two feet wide each yet they are one of the highest resolution speakers that I ever heard in my life so it's 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 kind of I would say like a, a bad fairy tale that we need to keep it as narrow to have the imaging and detail level high. No, that's BS. We need it narrow to in order to make it uh, more suitable and more uh, presentable for customers because it's easier to fit a skinny speakers in your room than wide speakers because your wife will say okay to skinny speakers and will say no to the big one but that's that's the main reason uh, all the other s is, is there is some truth about the benefits of the narrow buffer but they don't tell you so there's like one thumb up but there's a huge thumb up, down that comes with it because of the loss of the uh, uh, primary acoustic properties so anyway now we we have talked quite a bit about about these things one more thing I would like to add is that the answer for that oh whatever so we have a buffer step loss and uh, we have the the problems so because of these uh, surrounds and, and the frame pff, we just slap DSP on it great <laughs> we just uh, we had a nervous agitated thin and artificial sound and we want to correct it by making it more artificial bravo so anyway i think i already told about all of these things if you liked it just like it uh, keep on getting informed if uh, whatever you hear from me look into it if you have narrow speakers set them up toy around with them see how you hear them when you are at the sweet spot if you move around what are the changes you hear uh, I, I suggest that uh, try just turning off one of your speakers and just listen to one and that will give you a much more accurate uh, uh, gauging of what your speakers are really doing so just have just the left side working sit in front of it move off axis and see how the sound changes and then uh, uh, experience these things that I'm talking about for your sound and try to do the same thing with, with a speaker that has a wide front buffer. Um, 
of course if that wide front buffer speaker is maybe like from the 70s and it's uh, it's some junky old clunky speaker of course it will not sound detailed high resolution uh, and so on so so if you are comparing like a, a brand new porsche to the to a crappy old ford truck of course the brand new porsche will win out so also use your common sense when you when you do these comparisons so have a fantastic day and uh, a fantastic audio journey bye bye